Funding for this program is provided by Cisco, ITT Corporation, Microsoft Research, Shell Oil Company, State Farm, and Sun Microsystems. That moment of discovery where you uncover something that no one has ever seen before, there's nothing like it. I looked down and I just welled up with tears because the earth was just so incredibly beautiful beneath us. If you don't have women engaged, you lose half the creativity. You lose half of the brain power. The fact that we're gonna use this to help other people, it's really amazing. You're about to meet some remarkable women who are changing our world. At 30, Anne is a research scientist searching for genetic causes of diseases. Zilan is a technologist. She's just as agile leading a global team as she is kicking a soccer ball. And as an astronaut, Joan maneuvers a huge robotic arm in space. You'll also meet some students who are building a wind turbine to generate electricity. Who says teenage girls can't do the heavy lifting? Get ready now to take a phenomenal journey. I don't know if they'll have more details about the show as it gets closer, but do you know who's playing? Mm -hmm. It'll be so fun. Um, Matt Curie. Awesome. So yeah. really great. And um, Guster. Mm -hmm. That's trusty, but I never imagined that I would grow up to be a scientist. It actually really didn't cross my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ann Carpenter. I'm 30 years old. I live in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, it looks like a bathroom. <laughs> it really does. I'm a research scientist. My grandpa actually gave me a little science kit when I was really young and it had this disgusting formaldehyde frog that you're supposed to dissect and I just thought it was so foul. I <laughs> didn't want to touch it at all. Um, so I was definitely not the inspired from the early age type. I grew up on a farm, 111 acres in rural Indiana. We had cows and chickens and a goat and a dog and a lot of cats <laughs> running around. I didn't get into town much except for soccer practice once, <laughs> once a week or so. Um, so I really just read a lot of books. I loved cooking and baking, just a lot of quiet activities at home. It wasn't until I hit college that I started to see science as, as a lot more interesting. And I think it was actually uh, learning about the molecular biology, learning about DNA and about the little intricate mechanisms that make our cells work and in turn make our bodies work. I'm the director of the imaging platform at the Broad Institute, which is a collaborative institute between Harvard and MIT. The Institute's um, director is Eric Lander, and he was involved in sequencing the human genome probably the greatest scientific accomplishment of, of the last century. And that's really the focus here going forward, is how do we take the information that we know about the genetic material that makes up human beings and really use it to understand how the body works and how we can help the body to work better in the cases when it, when it succumbs to disease. In school, my favorite subjects were math and science. My biggest thing was to be an engineer, and I decided when I was 13 that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an electrical engineer. Shannon, good morning, Houston. We're looking forward to having a wonderful solar array retract. Being an engineer in space is not a lot of different than being an engineer on Earth, except for the lack of gravity. It's really nice to float but sometimes you need to be a little stationary so that you can actually get yourself in a good position to get your tools in place and do what you need to do. We are with you on video in the lab. Nice to see you, Johnny. My first mission was in December of 2006. Three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery lighting up the nighttime sky. It was incredible. I flew with six wonderful people. Uh, we flew up to the International Space Station. This is Mission Control Houston. The hatch between the uh, shuttle and station now open. Joint operations officially began at 5.54. One of my main tasks on my mission was to operate the robotic arm, to install a new piece onto the International Space Station. 
this is basically 1 50th of the actual size. So the arm in space is actually 58 feet long. It weighs 4,000 pounds, and it can hold 220,000 pounds. So it's pretty huge. And it operates just like your arm. The NASA space program's objective is basically to explore. And people always ask, well, why do you want to explore? First out of the hatch as the International Space Station travels uh, into an orbital sunrise. Our goal is to see what else is out there, to see if maybe we can inhabit the moon, see if there's other life out there, is to try to find cures for AIDS, for cancer. We do a lot of research on the space station for medical objectives. If you stop and think about what has happened through thousands of years of civilization, the things that change the world come from engineering, science, and technology. Think about a bridge that you drive your car over. Think about all those fancy equipment they do open heart surgery with. Think about how you would travel today without the airplane, or without the ship, or without a car. Think about what the world would be like without electricity. And think about the invention of the IC, the integrated chip. Think about these beautiful cell phones with music, with video, with audio, half the size of my palm. And then think about what technology, engineering, and science has done to the quality of life. How much we live longer, right? The clean water we have. Who do you think created those things? Hi, guys. A lot of people don't really address me as an engineer. They actually call me the technologist. Make sure that they uh, split the lot and, and move the wafers ahead, okay? Right now, what okay. I do is mostly to oversee very advanced technology development projects. Maybe the, the old Meaning, when we have a huge group of engineers designing a chip, you're gonna have to manufacture it and uh, deal with all issues that has to do with ramping a product into hundreds of millions of chips a year. After 25 years, I'm still in love with my work. <laughs> I was born in Vietnam. My father uh, had raised me as a very independent uh, little girl. I guess he had two because he wanted me to be an engineer. He has to, <laughs> to make, prepare me for that. And so uh, he gave me that dream. You can do it. You can do it. Here in 1975, Southern Vietnam lost to the Northern Vietnam, and uh, we did not want to live under communism. So my father, told the family, it's time to go, to, to try to get out. The situation was getting bad, so he sent us first, thinking that he could get out a few months later and follow us, but he was stuck behind for three, four years. So on that morning, that early morning, when we said goodbye to each other, he turned to me and he said, no matter what, you study and you study hard. We rented an apartment of two bedroom for, you know, 10, 11 people. So that's how we started life in America. I was determined one way or the other, I'm gonna study and I'm gonna be the best student possible. As part of the trend with technology, we thought that we needed to incorporate a robotics curriculum. One of the facets of the robotics competition that we participate in is to bring in children at a young age. Well, if you're any other program here. <laughs> and, and trying to encourage them to start early so that they can take the math and the science that's required at the earlier grades so that they can be better prepared when they hit the high school and obviously the college level. We actually go and take them to a computer and say, okay, you guys, you're going to program a robot. Then this is supposed to be here. What about this one? Like teaching them how to build it and program it. I'm not even an engineer yet, and I'm showing them what engineering is like. If you actually open this up, they're going to have like a lot of circuits right there. Everything involves engineering in some way or another. Bring it down and up and make sure it's centered. 
The real world is about solutions. It's about being able to help your community and doing the things that are necessary. There we go, 22, 24, 30, 30, 30, 30 32, 24, 18, 21. Okay, slow down, it goes yeah, down. Wait, it's hard. That's okay. <laughs> okay, hey, guys, hey, guys. Hey, 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 hey,